Hey everyone, welcome to the new moon, super moon in Capricorn report. So we've got our new moon super moon in Capricorn on the 23rd of December 2022. And I'm a little bit later than usual because I did the solstice report for you. So my tagline for this new moon is prepare for the future and create fantastic dreams. Kind of being asked to plan here. So let's see what the report has to tell us, yes? Okay, so we're stepping into an interesting energy with the Capricorn new moon on the 23rd of December. So it's a 216 Pacific, okay? And that is the energy of bringing in connection to divine order, to fusion, to the Trinity and a deep understanding. Then it's at 516 at EST time, which is linking us to the Trinity, transformation, love, independence. And it's at 1016 on UK time, which is highlighting coming together in an angelic resonance frequency linked with love and guided by independence. So as the Sagittarius new moon ends, the Capricorn new moon comes in. Our final moon of the year is at one degree and 33 minutes Capricorn, symbolizing new beginnings. There is something lovely about the Capricorn new moon this year, and this grounded earth energy is also in the sun, the moon, Venus, Mercury, and Pluto. So we've actually got Capricorn in five of the planets. I was going to show you, I'll try and show you without making too much noise. <laughs> so this isn't my chart, this is one that I printed up. Um, but it literally, if you look, if you look there, it shows you Capricorn is in all of those planets there. Okay, so because of that, We've got a very grounded energy and it means we have this strong Gaia energy and if you connect into Gaia you're going to upgrade a little bit okay it's a lovely energy for us to move into it really is and um so we're moving into this and we'll go out of the year in this energy although Mercury is coming up too with retrograde so I'll talk a little bit about that as we go along so Venus is at 16 degrees um Mercury is at 21 degrees and Pluto is at 27 degrees. Um, they're all, like I say, they're in Capricorn. So we're looking at spiritual trinity and divinity here. I don't know why I wrote them separately, but apparently I just did. <laughs> so this new moon will affect people born with personal planets and points at approximately 0 to 6 um, degrees of cardinal signs and 28 to 30 degrees of mutable signs. So you can grab a free chart online to work out these points for yourself to see what your chart is doing, right? So Capricorn is often shown as being the planner, the organiser, the practical climate, financially minded. Yet there's another side of Capricorn I want to talk about, okay? Remember, it's the mountain goat with the mermaid's tail. Now, I always say the mermaid's tail is kind of the fish's tail, but it's the mermaid's tail, isn't it? Or the merman's tail. It has this kind of grounded energy with a sensitivity underneath, okay? So there is something mysterious and magical about the energy of this sign, whether we see it or not. It's not seen in a practical sense because Capricorn is governed by Saturn. It's the star sign that's kind of the sign that is very um, dynamic in the sense of planning and, and achieving and creating from a space of pretty much nothing, right? Yet it has this very intuitive spiritual consciousness side that many people don't recognize or see in a Capricorn because Capricorns tend to hide that quite well. Yeah, okay. So this is the cardinal earth sign connected to Saturn, a symbolism of the father. So I've said to you before, you know, like Saturn's father time. And Saturn is the symbolism of father. So that energetic frequency of the male, the elder, yeah? And, you know, it's connected to generational lines as well and the impact it makes on our lives, yeah? So it's also nourishing and creative energy. This is a great new moon. To move into thinking about what defines you, right? What will be successful for you as you go along and go into 2023, right? How will you know that you are using this Capricorn energy that's available to you well, right? So for me, it's kind of about creating a, a calm life, not, you know, not kind of having so much chaos in my life and not really not seeing where I'm going, which always tends to be kind of the aspect with me. I mean, I know we all have that. But for me, it always seems a bit bigger. And that's obviously just my perception. But you just don't know, do you? So we're moving into the energy of a new beginning, as I've already said. Something is coming through and it will be having a kind of unexpected frequency, okay? So we've been in this third dimensional energy, right? Yeah? 
And then we're gonna, the energy is asking us actually to shift higher. Now, if any of you watch my solstice report, you'll have a little bit more of an idea about this. Um, and if you haven't watched it, I would recommend you have a look at it, right? So are you ready to create new goals? In Capricorn, it always wants you to look how far you've come. Okay, these energies will get you into planning and due to Saturn being in Aquarius, because Saturn Aquarius is actually in Saturn at this moment, which is the ruler of Capricorn, there is a sense of wanting to move forward with the timelines of Father Time. So Capricorn is a sign of the climber, it climbs steadily up the hill, okay? And it's the kind of planning and climbing that will last, yeah? So this also, this sign, Capricorn, the energy and the frequency of Capricorn will also link you to manifestation. There's a high level manifestation in this. Capricorn may take a while to get there, yet it will always manifest what it chooses to manifest. Sigh a little, because that tight square between Saturn and Uranus is about to pull apart, which will mean that Uranus will start to play its part, okay? You may find that Uranus may shift your foundations. as if it's shaking a tree. You may feel a little bit unstable, okay? With this tight square clearing, there will be individual and global veil lifting, and Uranus will ask us to look at what we are doing with the understanding of how we plan for the next space from the Capricorn energy. Due to Saturn being in Aquarius, I sense you're being called to reach out. Saturn does symbolize elders, father figures, mentors, those that guide us. Um, like the last report, I'm feeling there's a map being brought through to you, okay? And being given this sense of you have a plan and there's something you just need to put down onto paper to make it make it real, yeah? So with Aquarius here, we're being called to reach out also to someone who knows and might have some expertise to give us help if necessary. There's a new level of understanding with Saturn, making sure that you look at everything as Saturn wants you to get it right. And this is a very Capricornian trait, wanting to get things right, wanting to cross the T's, dot the I's and be very, very sure that it feels safe in the energetic frequency. There's a clash aspect happening with Jupiter, which is newly in Aries at zero degrees, square the sun and moon, okay? So it's asking us to look at our money, Jupiter, and Aries is concerned with the face that you're like projecting, with the face that we're projecting to the world, okay? It's a square, so it is going to test you. However, I feel that it's also bringing you opportunities. So long as you stay moderate and attempt not to overdo it, um, it's supporting you in the link to divine energy um, as this is a return, so Jupiter return, because it's cut, it's done this before this year, there's going to be an amplification of that energy. Um, and I'm seeing it kind of still linked to that new beginnings and energetic shifts and changes. So I want to say a little bit about squares. Now, normally squares are kind of seen as a, as a little bit tricky, but I'm starting to see them in a bit of a different way. And when I look at the squares and when I do these charts, one of the things that comes up is that the squares are, seem to be giving us the capacity to expand rather than it tra um, contract. So if you allow the trickiness, the trigger, because you might get a trigger, to inform you, it may be a gift yeah well, actually i'm seeing it as a gift so i think it's a gift so see it as a gift so no matter how difficult it is like you know in, in a personal chart or if you did a compatibility chart it would say oh you have a square here with this person in this relationship but if you can deal with the squares you can have a wonderful relationship right so current goes direct at 11 degrees and 56 minutes in aries on this new moon. So remember, Karen is the wounded parts of you that need to be healed. The energy here is being in your true self. Who are you showing to the world, the real you or not? I know I've been asking you this before, but remember, remember what I say, it's a gentle moving. So some of the things, the things will flow and then they'll change and they'll flow and they'll change, yeah? So Chiron square with the moon could be seen as a little bit tough, okay? But like I say, you're going to be able to clear the wounding and it may even be ancestral and generational and that is a good thing. It's a good thing if you can get that stuff cleared up and it's also linking to the 11-11. 
we have the energy of double angel numbers linked to love and transformation. There could be something coming in to provide you with the healing in your love spaces. A shift is happening in this energy with Chiron, reminding us things will take time. Maybe there is a turning point in which you feel relief and something has stopped hurt. It's not hurting anymore. You don't feel that pain anymore. Right? Karen is going to strike away the sensitivity and strengthen you to something that was once a wound. Yes, you'll feel a healing in that. You'll feel a, a relief in that. It will feel better for you. Mercury, which is in Capricorn at 21 degrees and 30 minutes, is close to Saturn-Pluto conjunction. This is going to help with a shift in perspective. Mercury is sextile Neptune, which is going to bring influence during this, the Mercury retrograde that's coming, okay? So there's going to be downloads that are going to help us to know what we need to purge from our lives, what we need to get rid of, okay? Neptune will assist us to drop anything that we no longer want or need. There is something significant about this new moon because I feel it kind of plays out in its way all the way through to March. Now, if you've been watching my reports, you will know that there's some changes coming. There's some shifting, like Pluto is not going to be in the same sign. And I think and Mars will move out of the sign that it's in. There's going to be some shifting. And because of the shifting, there's going to be the changes. The changes are coming in March, okay? Mercury retrograde comes in on the 29th of December and it will be in shadow and it's getting closer to Pluto within about three degrees. So you might find yourself reconsidering the things you've been thinking about before. The retrogrades last until January and will take a little while to phase out. You may find yourself looking back, wanting to think about things in a different way. So Mercury symbolizes refocusing, reframing. It's kind of all the rewords. So refining, reassessing, it really does symbolize those words. So that's kind of where we're being asked to go, to look into that. Because oh, that not, not yet, because Mercury doesn't go retrograde until the 29th of December. But that's kind of where we're moving. That's what's happening for us, right? So kind of remember that. That the 23rd, you've just got a little bit of time and then it's going to go retrograde and you're going to feel that thing. And remember, retrograde in Mercury is all about communication and being very careful of signing contracts and things like that. So we are literally reprogramming the energies of Capricorn, which are the energies of building a better future from the right blueprint. We're being asked to use the right blueprint here, you know. Um, and you know, you gotta remember that Saturn, which rules Capricorn, is kind of linking into top-down structures and that kind of thinking. So what we're being asked to do is to refine into the mermaid's tail, into the merman's tail, into the sensitivity of Capricorn, so that we can use it in a better way and move into a higher vibration vibration or frequency of Capricorn energy and planning on a higher level. So Capricorn will not start its journey up the hill until it knows. So that blueprint needs to be very clean and you need to know where you're really going and understanding your plan before you move forward because Capricorn won't do it otherwise it will just stand at the bottom hill waiting that mountain go just waiting until it's ready to go up the hill. Right? This will bring in a sense of who you are. Um, what you can make possible, right? And how you can use your own unique aspects because you do have these unique aspects and it's for you to move them, right? And use them and shift into them in a really good way. So by the end of the Jan um, sorry, by the end of January, the planets are going to start moving in direct. So there'll be more planets moving in direct. I'm not sure if it's all of them. I can't remember. I haven't done the chart. But there's been because of that, there's, that's another shift that's happening. And this shift is going to help us as we move into the new year. Now, I always kind of say that March is kind of the new year's. I will see March as the new year. I will see 21st of March as being the beginning. Really, it's when we refocus because we have the solstice there as well. And it's solstices that create this kind of impetus to move or to start or for something new to my mind, right? And they bring in a shift in consciousness. And because they bring in a shift in consciousness, it's going to be a change, right? So the season goes back to the Capricorn solstice. We're being asked to get things done before the March solstice. This is the time for you to make a plan, is what I've been saying. I mean, obviously, these are my notes. <laughs> but you know, it's about you making a plan. I write it out because I have dyslexia. Otherwise, I would just 
and not know what I was saying to you. So there's a great show of independence in this chart. So we've got the ones and the zeros and the fives presenting themselves. They say we're ready to move into a new beginning. This is change that is happening across the board, okay? The time is happening and it's happening right now. We're in a sense of movement beyond what we currently know and it's going to bring us as a collective and individually into a new space. The biggest shift will happen at the end of 2024. Um, we're within this 10-year phase that the angels discussed in the 2022 report that I did on my YouTube channel. So we're in this 10-year cycle, which started in 2021. If you want to know more about the angels' message, I'm going to put a link in the notes, and it'll be at the end of the video somewhere around here. There'll be a little link where you can click on it, and you can see the angel message if you haven't watched it already. What can I say? This is the energy we can use to plan for the future in a healthy way, using the groundedness of this wonderful earth sign that is in five aspects in this chart to help you to create from a space of centeredness. Now, how lovely is that? So I've got some intention setting questions and actions for you. So the intention setting questions are, what would you like in your plan? Dream wild here. So think about all the things you might like in your plan. Write what you would like to bring. Write down what you'd like to bring. And what are you willing to commit to? To write what you're willing to commit to. Then this is your chance to make a solid plan. Capricorn expects it of you. You could make a three month plan. Okay, and see it through, so you can th see you through the last parts of this year and into the first quarter of next year. So I'm looking at this as going from the 21st of December all the way to the 21st of March. I am wishing you lots of luck with this. I really, really, really am. And everybody, I don't know if I'll bring a, a message out before Christmas. So those of you who celebrate, I want to say Merry, Merry Christmas. I love Christmas. As you see, I put glitter on for Christmas. You know, there's no any excuse for me to put glitter on, but I love glitter. <laughs> so, yes. So I'm sending you all so much love, no matter whether you celebrate it or not. I'm sending you lots of lots of love. Have a beautiful holiday if you're having a holiday. Have a beautiful time with your friends and your relatives. And I'm sending you deep love. Namaste, everyone. Take care of yourself. And I will speak to you very, very soon. Take care. I'll speak to you. Maybe if I don't do a video this year, I'll be speaking to you in 2023. But we will see. We will see. Sending you lots of love. Bye, everyone. Kisses. Bye. Bye-bye.